everybody, this is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations, and I'm here today to share a design team project that I created using their exclusive Retro Men paper, and this is going to be a fun, fun, fun project. This is a folio, it doesn't take a whole lot of paper, um, but it, and it's really quick to put together, and I wanted to kind of get it out um, at the same time as I did my other tutorial, just in case you guys wanted to do this for Father's Day, it'd be a great project for the man in your life. So um, I want to get started with that. Before I get going with that, if you um, want to, we have time. Today and tomorrow are the last two days of the uh, Country Craft Creations contest. So in this contest, through tomorrow, if you make an order, in the comment box before you check out, if you mention the designer that sent you, so like, you know, I would appreciate it if you said Michelle sent you, um, <laughs> the designer who gets the most mentions will win a gift certificate to Country Craft Creations. And then of those people that mention that particular designer, they will be entered into a contest and one lucky person will also win a gift certificate for $50 to Country Craft Creations. So if you go do an order, um, if you're inclined to do so, please uh, mention my name and we will both be entered in a contest to win. So let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. Again, this is Retro Men exclusive paper collection from Country Craft Creations and I have just, it's been a joy to work with, I love it. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the tutorial. We're gonna make the base of our album first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna need a couple pieces of paper. So the first piece of paper you're going to need is what we're, I'm calling the back of the folio. It's going to be an eight by 10 piece of paper. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in your scoreboard here and you're going to score at one inch on each side. Okay, pretty simple. We'll put that aside and then you're going to need two pieces that are I'm calling the right and left sides and they're each going to be um, 12 by 12 and basically what you're going to do is you're going to put them in your scoreboard and you're going to score at one inch and at seven you're going to do both of those the same way and then what you're going to do is you're going to put it in your paper cutter and you're going to cut it at four inches off the bottom so I'm going to do that really super quick so that we get those two pieces my big cutter is on my other table. There we go. So you're going to essentially cut the left and right side paper. So two of these 12 by 12, you're gonna make it into eight inches tall and then a piece that's four inches tall, okay? So then um, once we do that, we're gonna put these together really easily. So we're going to fold and burnish. Okay, and then the right and left sides, basically what's going to happen with these is the one inch sides will be kind of the spines of this uh, folio. And then this page will fold to the inside. So it kind of makes a fold out kind of thing. So one will glue to one side and one will glue to the other. Okay, pretty simple with that. I'm gonna get these out of the way for just a second. So we'll fold and burnish. Okay, and then we're gonna glue them together. So one will open to one side and one will open to the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue them so that the outside, well, so the, the back piece glues to the inside of the side here. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, and I'm not going to miter the corners. Uh oh, now my glue's not working. I just did a tutorial and my glue actually did what it was supposed to do pretty much the whole time. And now it's not going to do it. And it's going to make me crazy. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. So basically, I'm just going to lay this down right to the score line. Okay. 
Okay. But just like so on both sides. All right. So let's turn that over. And this is going to have a fun surprise in it with the waterfall. I really like the waterfall. I think it turned out really cool. All right. So I'm just going to fold that so it's a little more manageable. And lay that down like so. And it looks like I might have to do a little trimming because I think my back looks like it's a little bit off. So I'm going to trim that just a hair, make it square. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we have our folio. So what it's going to do is it's going to set like this and open up like that and go like that. Okay, so that's the first part done. Pretty um, easy to do. And then the second part, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lay down these pieces here. So these pieces are going to end up um, being a closure as well as an opportunity for photos. So we're gonna lay this down. And what we're gonna do is we're going to glue it right to, so here's your spine right here. We're gonna glue it right to the middle of this page using this half inch tab, okay? So it'll fold like that. So I'm gonna get my centering ruler here and our page is eight inches tall. So we're gonna center it so the four inches at the bottom and then grab some glue, and we're gonna do this on either side. And I'm gluing them in the middle. You can glue them a little offset if you wanted to, however you wanna do it. It is your book. And then I'm gonna just put this about the two inch mark. Just be careful you don't get it like into the crease here. All right, just like that. Okay, so then when this folds over, then this will fold like this. And then what you're gonna do is set a magnet. And what did I do with my magnets? Okay, I got a brand new pack of magnets. All right, so grab your magnet and we'll go ahead and set that and then we will be done with that. All right, so I'm just going to take and put my magnet like right about there and take this off and then lay that down. Okay, so I'll keep that closed. And then I'm going to go ahead and I've got some giant score tape here and I'm just going to cover each of those with a piece of score tape. I have been using um, several different pieces of score tape and then I was looking through my stuff and I totally forgot I had a one inch roll in my stash and so I'm like well that will work I kind of dig in that okay so we're gonna do that on each side so we're gonna set our magnet there and then we're gonna go ahead we'll open this up and we'll fold and burnish here and fold this so what you're gonna have is a six inch page and a five inch page that will be um, also the closure to the side of your folio. Pretty super easy. Okay. So then I had you just go ahead and score it and then cut it and then you don't have to score it twice, okay? So it's kind of like a cheater way to do it. But when I designed this album, I was trying to do something that was nice and quick, um, didn't require a lot um, of paper, and then you know, kind of also utilized all the pieces too. So not quite one of my configuration albums, but you know, kind of close. <laughs> so um, I was just trying to use all the parts and pieces. Okay, so then we're gonna set one more magnet do the same thing again. 
And I'm just roughly doing it in the middle there. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and cut our two pieces. And I've been um, kind of covering the entire magnet with score tape lately because it kind of helps bridge the paper and not hopefully let it, you know, show so much. Um, I don't know if it really works or not, but it makes me feel better. So there you go. Okay, so there's that. So then the next thing we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our inner piece here. And our inner piece, get this ready here, is a nine and a half by 11 piece of paper. And what you're going to do is grab your scoreboard and put it in your scoreboard. On the nine and a half inch side, we're going to score at half, at one, and at nine. So half, one, and nine. And then turn it on the 11 inch side and score it at eight. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a pocket page. Now we're going to use this half inch tab as a binding and this will be a gusset and then ignore it down here. We'll just use it. We'll incorporate it into the pocket and then we're going to um, use this piece here for a pocket too. Now you can um, cut this half inch piece completely out or you can just simply fold it over and then have it as a reinforcement, which I think is what I'm going to do um, just because I feel like it. Um, but you don't necessarily have to. This page is going to be pretty reinforced as it is. Okay. So we're going to do that. Make a tab. I'm just going to make a tab here and here, but we're going to cut straight here. Okay, because that is going to be kind of the binding to the page. So we want to make sure that stays straight. So let's get this out of the way. Get this off here for just a sec. So this top piece here will be that will be um, the binding and the gusset. Okay, so like that. And then we're going to have a pocket. So we're going to fold that. The pocket will fold to the inside of this page. And then we're going to just utilize that whole piece. You can cut it off if you want to, but you really don't have to. Um, but we're going to utilize it to make a pocket. And then this piece here will just fold down. And you can cut this off too if you want. But if you want to just reinforce the edge, just go ahead and use it since it's here. Um, you can totally do that. So we're just going to glue that down to the page. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and create our pocket here. So we're just going to put some uh, glue on this tab and this tab. This is a really quick project to put together and I thought it was a lot of fun. And I love the water element to it. I just thought it was really kind of cool. Okay, so we have our pocket made and our page made. So then if we grab our folio, then our folio, it's going, this is going to fit right to the inside on the back page. And then when it folds up, it'll have a, the score um, right there that will create the gusset. Okay, so we're just going to glue half inch tab we should miter the corner of that i should have done that part so the part that actually attaches to the book we'll go ahead and miter um but keep the half inch gusset straight okay so let's do this and then we're going to glue it right to the inside of the back page right to the score line okay Making sure we're all straight. Okay, so that will be our inner page. So then this will fold over like that and like that. So that'll ha that's how that'll open. And then the next piece that we're going to do is we're going to, oops, we're not, well, here I cut the papers already um, for the page. We could go ahead and put those down. 
So the, this, I usually like to put my pattern paper in my pockets because then it covers up all the tabs and then my tags don't get stuck on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna fold this up so that it's easy to do. Now you could also um, do this before you attach it to your folio. Um, however, it's easy for you to do. I love this paper. It is just so pretty. Okay. There's that. And then cover the pocket. I didn't ink these papers. Um, honestly, I, you know, I, I do like the look of inking papers, but I, a lot of times I forget, I get all excited and I don't do it, <laughs> but because this is dark paper, you know, um, it would have been real pretty, you know, to do that. Okay. So there's our pocket there. And then this will be for the inner page on the outside right there. Take that off and then we'll glue this down. And my, oh, my glue is acting up and it's gonna drain the crazy. Uh, my thought is that this was gonna be a really nice like photo mat type page. Um, you will see that in the final, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? All right, did some major surgery on my glue tip, and now look at her go. Well, and then glue everything to, you know, where it's not supposed to be glued. Oh, boy. Okay. I did some... Oh, come on, really? Okay. I think it's time for a new tip. So I'm going to get this glued down and then I'm going to get a new tip. All right, so get our paper down on top of this inner page. And then I'm going to find a new tip because I think that one's finally toast. I thought I had it fixed, but apparently it doesn't want to work. So... Okay. Okay, so we have our inner pocket done. Right. A waterfall. So this is the fun part. This is this is the cool part. So we're gonna do a really cool thing, a new thing with the waterfalls. So I got my pieces set. So the back of all the pieces will be um, plain cardstock mats, and I used brown artisan cardstock for that. I'm using black artisan cardstock for the folio base, and then we're gonna use our, of course, our pattern paper for the waterfall. So the first thing we're gonna need to do before we put the waterfalls on is that we're going to need to cover the back with the pattern paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the folio back is eight by eight. So um, the pattern paper is cut at seven and seven eighths by uh, seven and seven eighths. And then the other thing too with this folio, which is kind of cool, is that um, because the, the dimensions of everything um, worked out with the eight by eight paper um, size for the backs and stuff like that, um, in the waterfalls, they're going to be four by six. So this actually um, utilized the paper really nicely uh, so that I could use, you know, scraps from cutting these big paces, pieces, I still had really nice pieces that I could use for, you know, the waterfalls and for these pieces here and all that. So um, it really did use the paper um, wisely. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do is put your pattern paper on the inside back of your folio. Okay, so here's where we're at. We got our pages and we've got the fronts, okay? So it looks like this from the top. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside and then we're gonna get our waterfalls and you're gonna make um, four of these and they're going to be eight and a half by six and you're gonna put them in your scoreboard at eight and a half and you're gonna score at four and four and a half, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Kind of, we're gonna kind of do this almost like my um, 
my stacked waterfall kind of technique um, in a way as, as far as how they're made. Um, but then you're going to fold and burnish. And you're, again, you're going to need four of these, which will create eight, eight pages. Okay, so fold and burnish all four of them. And um, I'm not going to put the pattern papers on right now, but I'll kind of show you what it'll look like here in a second. Okay, just fold and burnish. A lot of opportunity for photos in this album. Seriously, tons of places to put photos. All right, so we've got our waterfalls done. So we're gonna open our folio. Let's get this out of the way for a second. Okay, open our folio to the inside. And what you're gonna do is we're gonna start at the top and I'm gonna grab my ruler, wherever that went, there it is. <laughs> and I am a mess today. Okay, so we're gonna line that up because we wanna center it and we're gonna put glue on our spine here. And then we're just gonna center that up. And I'm actually gonna turn this to its side because then I can see it a little easier. And you're gonna glue it right to the top of the page and you're gonna glue it right in the center, okay? So it's gonna go right to the edge. And this is why you needed to put the pattern paper on first, okay? So we're at um, three inches because this is six inches wide, okay? And you're gonna glue that right there, okay? So one waterfall done. Then what you're gonna do is, with that open so it's out of your way, you're gonna grab your second waterfall and we're gonna do it to the side. So we're gonna go right to that score line there. We're gonna line that up and set that down like right to the score line, right in the center. And I'm calling this a roundabout waterfall because what this is going to do is, is kind of go around in a circle. Instead of the waterfall going um, side to side, you know, like up and down or side to side, um, this one is going to go like kind of basically around itself. And the, the kind of the inspiration for this was I saw the maze cards on Pinterest the other day and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I was trying to figure out how I could kind of incorporate that type of thing into my design. And I got to play in with this design and it turned out really kind of cool. So I wanted to try it and I hope y'all like it. Um, it's really fun to do. The only, um, you know, drawbacks are that if you want, you know, you have to have a page big enough to accommodate so that they do actually, you know, close nicely and all that. Um, but... I mean, it's really kind of cool and impressive when this all is put together. And I'll kind of show you at the end of my video, um, if I remember, because, you know, there's a lot of times I don't remember. But I did a prototype, and it worked out really kind of cool. Um, I changed it for this video because I didn't like the way the page laid. But, and I really wanted it to be perfect for you guys, so... But we'll see if I remember to do it. I kind of want to get this done because I want to make sure that if y'all want to make projects for Father's Day, you have enough time to do it. Okay, so we've got our waterfalls on. So you have one at the top side, bottom side. Okay, so then they close counterclockwise. So like this. And then you keep going. And this is why I call it a roundabout because it goes around everything. And it just is really cool. Now, the other thing is that this page will help hold it shut, so you don't really need a closure to it. And then once you get your pattern papers on, it will be amazing cool when you open this up and you see this waterfall. So let me give you an example. And um, let's see. These are the up and down ones, and these are the side to side ones. So we're going to put Wilbur right up front, and Wilbur is going to go right here, and we'll glue this down. And then you just need um, four mats 
that are, you know, vertical or portrait, and you need formats that are horizontal or um, landscape. And this was all created with the leftovers from cutting the papers, you know, from this album. So I had plenty of pieces of patterned paper to do this with. And then the mats, I used a contrasting color of artisan cardstock. So then this, in this um, example, I used blue, or blue, brown, boy. And then you have basically eight pages, some with, you know, pictures on them. So you could put a smaller photo, you know, next to Wilbur, for example, or you can put a larger picture over top and have the pattern paper be a border. But then it'll open up clockwise fashion. You can see that all the way around. And then you have a nice big area here for a beautiful photo. Or you could lay things down and just, you know, like have them be, um, you know, separate and able to, you know, be taken out. So like tags or something like that. So that is my roundabout waterfall. And I think it is really, really fun. Okay, so basically, um, let me get... The rest, okay, so there's one more thing that we need to do. So out of some scraps that I had, um, I'm gonna put those out of the way. So we gotta, of course, put pattern paper on and do pattern paper on the spines and all that stuff. But then I, I had some paper left over. I wanted to make some pockets. So um, out of the scraps that I had, um, I cut two pieces that were three and a half by six and I scored them at half inch on the two short sides and half inch on the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and just cut those. So this pocket will be five inches wide. And what my plan is, is that we're gonna put them on the inside of the um, side five inch page. And then that way we will have a really nice pocket. So we'll, after we do that, we'll fold and burnish. Like so, okay. And then this will go on the inside of this page right here, okay? And then again, I'm gonna put pattern paper on and it's gonna go all the way in and it will cover um, my tabs. Okay, get that paper clip out of the way. And then I'm gonna lay that down right like that. Where's my thing here? Okay, so now we have a pocket on the inside of that page, and then we'll have this full page right here. Um, yeah, I should have fit test that a little bit better. Just reburnish that. It'll be quite all right. There we go. Okay. Boom. Done. So this pocket will go on the other side. So we'll open this up and fold and burnish again. And I'm gonna use this one because it's easier for me. The angle. I have a bunch of bone folders and they all do different things. And I use them for different things. Okay, so you should dry fit your pockets first. If you need to nudge them over a little bit, you can. Okay, there we go. Especially if they're gonna go inside a fold. Always a good thing to do. Okay, so that pocket will go here, right to the edge there. There we go. All right. Make sure that's down, okay? 
So now each of the five inch page on the side will have a pocket on the inside. And there we go. Okay, just like that. Go like that, it'll open and open pocket page and then you have your roundabout waterfall. So basically all I need to do is put on pattern paper now, but before we do the pattern paper, there is one thing that we are gonna do. We're gonna create a closure. Now, in my prototype, I did um, I did something um, with ribbon. You can do ribbon if you want to. That is totally um, up to you. Um, for this album, because I did the inner um, page here, it actually keeps its shape pretty good because the, the page in there will help hold the, the sides open. Does that make sense? Um, because of the gusset and the end of the page so it doesn't kind of collapse into itself if you want to you can put a magnet here and basically utilize this magnet here and let me show you what I'm talking about so you have this magnet here that is closing that side so we got to figure out which magnet not that one so we'll get a magnet that will actually attach to that one that has the sticky on it just so you can set it and you can set it and you can actually use half of a magnet piece to help keep the shape of your album if you're worried about it okay um i hope that makes sense so you know yeah you would end up with um kind of a odd number of magnets in your stash but um it will work just fine and it will help keep the shape of your album. You can also keep it um, closed together with ribbon if you want to. And again, this album will keep its shape. But let me show you what I'm talking about. So for my prototype album, okay, um, it kept wanting to collapse in on itself. And then the other thing that I did was that I put the roundabout actually on a flip page. And it kept wanting to fall down. So that's why I set, I changed it to a side opening page. Worked pretty good. Um, but then I added a magnet closure here, so that kind of helped. But anyways, this was my prototype album. So I'll just kind of show you this one here real quick. And it opens up like this. And I did not add a pocket to this one, but I did it to the one we have in our tutorial. Um, but it also, it has the magnet under here. I added it after the fact to kind of help keep the shape of the book. And then I also had the ribbon because it was pretty. But um, then this one here opens up like this. So you can see what it's going to look like um, with my, you know, using the prototype. But then this one here, you know, has the roundabout. And I used the pearl gold sheen paper from Country Craft Creations. It was really pretty. And um, I just thought it matched the paper really, really nicely. Um, the other thing that I did was that I learned you need to put the pattern paper on before you put your waterfalls on. Otherwise, you end up with a corner that was not covered. So what I did was I cut some heart punches um, out and I just surrounded my papers or my waterfall with that. So that worked out pretty good. Um, but anyway, that was my my um, prototype. So now so you can see why I always make a prototype because I always want to make sure that the design is going to work really well. So anyways, if you, um, you know, just want to, you can use the magnet to keep it shut. Now this one didn't have an inner page that kept it shut because it didn't go across the whole thing. So this one does have it so the sides actually don't collapse so you don't really have to use the magnet if you don't want to um but if you do if you want to use the magnet to help do the the closure if you don't want to put a ribbon on this especially since it's the retro min paper if you didn't want to do a tie closure um do the magnet and you just need a half of a magnet because this is more than enough to help keep it closed okay so when you set it you'll just take it like so, and just lay it down. Okay, it's nice and straight. And then there you have it. And then you have a magnet closure that you can use for this album. Okay, so I'm going to stop and I'm going to put all the pattern paper on and um, I that's my tutorial. This was really super simple. Um, I do want to show you, let's see, I did use some of the um, 
my colors papers that um, the coordinating card stocks that you can get from Country Craft Creations um, that match the Retro Min papers. And I took three of the colors and I cut out tags for the pockets. So I got three for each side um, for the five inch page pockets. So these will fit right in here. So more photo mat opportunities. Um, so yeah, that's my tutorial. I hope that makes sense. You um, will see the walkthrough at the beginning of the video. So this is how you make it really super simple, really super quick. Didn't take much paper. That's my project. I hope you like it. And um, yeah, I hope that tutorial <laughs> made sense. I did it kind of quick and dirty. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Stay crafty and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.